Welcome to Animator's Breakfast. Um, this is a show where we talk about inspiration um, with different people who work in the animation industry. Um, and today, really, really wonderful. I'm <laughs> really happy, very excited to have him on. But I have Howard Wimshurst here. Great to talk to you again. Yeah, round two. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is how it's done. This is how a proper podcast is. I'm learning so much. Well, it's lovely to have you here. I'm, I'm really, I know this is our uh, second time talking because yeah. you invite me on the Animators Guild podcast. Is it Animation Guild or Animators Guild? Everyone gets it wrong, so don't yeah. feel bad. Yeah. But it is the Animator Guild podcast. Yes. Animator with an OR, yeah. Animator. But it's okay because literally everyone gets it wrong <laughs> so it's a curse yeah, yeah. <laughs> well my name handle animation is you know you think it's smart at the start but then you try to explain <laughs> it and you're just like oh god yeah why did i do this to myself no i think animation is a really good little play on words i guess you could say thank you yeah yeah you i know, like it it's smart <laughs> it's cool originally it was um because I think I told you this before, but when I started thinking about doing the channel, I was looking at different video essays and one of them was Every Frame of Painting, of course, which is yeah. a beautiful sentence, but it is quite a mouthful. And I was like, oh, that works. Well, maybe I'll call my channel Animation as a Medium. <laughs> and my friends were like, mm, how about no? <laughs> Why it doesn't just... have the same ring yeah, to it. Yeah. <laughs> just shorten that down. I was like, OK. Oh. <laughs> so I did Animation. Um, but anyways, enough about me. Um <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know Howard, um, I'm sure a lot of you do. I mean, his work is just phenomenal. As we discussed before, he's got the Animators Guild, which is is a phenomenal resource for people. I know you offer courses, yeah. specifically one really phenomenal one called, um, you know, Getting Started in 2D Animation. Yeah, I just got the big one right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that the big one? Do you have other courses as well? Or is that the kind of main juicy big boy? That is the big boy. And then I also, I have a smaller course, which was actually like a test to see if it would work you know I was, yeah, I was yeah. just trying everything out and that that's about just a very specific um effect a uh, piece of effects animation yeah um, draw a circle <laughs> <laughs> i don't use that as quite as much but i've got a I, i'm working on more courses so it will not be the last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that you started in 2D animation. Well, yeah, yeah there's, there's so much to it. You know, there, there's so much I, I want to show people and there's so yes. much I get asked yeah. for. And getting started in 2D animation, well, that's just the start, yes. right? That's just the yeah. start. And where do you go from there? There's so many places you can take exactly. it. Exactly. Well, what, what I wanted to ask you actually is... Um, I know, like, even looking at your course, it's so extensive, like the, the notes, the amount of work you've put into it, you even offer a handbook and the assignments are really far ranging, mm. you know, there's a huge amount of work that's gone into it. But where do you decide to stop <laughs> when it comes to including things as getting started? You know, where's the line? Yeah, I, I think that's a really big question, not just for like, yeah. in this context, but as artists anywhere, you know, mm, people mm. ask me, like, when do you when do you know that a work is finished? And uh, mm -hmm, <laughs> that is an answer that's unique to every artist. Like yeah. one artist might, yeah. their answer to that might be different from another artist. And, and it's a big part of, of your work, like when you will call it done. You've got mm -hmm, to call it mm -hmm. done at some point though, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, when I, I'll go, I'll go into like a tangent of something and, I'll, and then I'll say, but I mean, I could write a book on just that thing. Yes. Yeah. And if I can say, yeah, but like, there's just too much there. Yeah. Then I decide, you know what, I, that's like an idea for another body of work and, and, I'll, and I'll take it there. Mm -hmm. But really it's like, I think um, with, with getting started, um, I looked at the things that were around because I'm, I'm not the only one who's making um, content around animation. Um, yeah, yeah. And... I saw that there was a lack of um, uh, people wanted to animate, but they also needed to draw. They needed to learn to draw and they knew that they needed to learn to draw. So that's one of the ways that I tried to set it apart is that mm, I actually mm. did. I, I offer a, a big chapter. I call it a chapter, but a chapter sounds really small. It's pretty big. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a, a section of it. A Yeah. A different word for a chapter, but in just uh, <laughs> the drawing part. Yes. So yeah. uh, perspective, um, 
being able to draw a cube is a really big deal i think mm -hmm. uh, in an artist's um journey if when when you can draw a cube and you have a really good command over a cube you can you can draw a lot of different things um yes, yeah. and, I, and i use the example of minecraft you know like minecraft is all these rendered cubes and then you can it render entire worlds yeah just from cubes it doesn't work exactly like that but it's a good way to just uh kind of show the power of of that technique yeah, yeah, in a way that yeah. is kind of simple to grasp and easy mm -hmm. to grasp so there are things like that and also um f filmmaking as well like yeah. seeing animation in the wider context of film is something that exists in film and even further away from that it's something that exists in entertainment mm -hmm. and and in culture and and so i actually probably i think i did more than was necessary and people taking the course might be thinking <laughs> yeah okay right can we can we learn the cool stuff now <laughs> but i just had to, you know i drew i drew animation as like a space on the map yeah and then around it is other things it's like you know and this is is this is part of film you mm -hmm. know and then film is also live action mm -hmm. and and also what is animation yeah it's the persistence of vision is is probably the the root yes. of animation yeah. if you think about it you know you're not actually watching something move you're watching a series of drawings which are creating the illusion of yes. movement yeah. so mm -hmm. you know i i wanted to really you know, give a context to it, which actually took me years and and to to learn. And before that, yeah, I yeah. I didn't have that idea of what I was stepping into with animation. And I think it's like it's kind of a privilege to to learn that and to mm -hmm. know that um, the context mm. of it and and try and set the stage mm -hmm. uh, so that. Maybe that's the difference between someone just uh, maybe as a teenager finding this out and it's just a fad that you forget about in a year yeah. and then maybe saying, actually, this is really special. I think I will look into this and really consider it. And I just want to do everything I can to encourage people um, down that path, because uh, when I was at uh, when I was in school taking my A-levels, which is around the age of 17, 18 years old, yeah. I think, in the UK, I was doing animation. I was part of this community online called Newgrounds, which was the big, the place yes, to be yeah, as yeah, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, an animator back in the day. And I was just doing them for fun. I was making, t I was joining tournaments, making animations. Um, very embarrassing looking back on them now, but <laughs> hey. <laughs> but I, I was going to be a geographer. I was going to study geography at university. Wow. Yeah. And this was something that I wasn't really that passionate about. I, I, I was, I was interested in it. Yeah. I will say that I, I was interested in GIS mapping, which is if you look at Google Maps, how they mm -hmm. they send these little cars down all these back alleys in the in the middle of nowhere to, to map out a big yeah. map of the world that's updating. It's interesting. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I was I passionate about it. Mm, maybe I could have learned to be passionate about it. But the real thing I was obsessing over day and night was animation. Interesting. And yeah, interesting. I was lucky enough to have an epiphany mm. on on a day and i remember the day very clearly mm. Mm. um when i a force took over my body um when i wasn't concentrating yeah. and it turned my head towards my mum and said it spoke through my mouth wow. and it said i'm going to study animation i think i'm going to choose a career in animation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it wasn't me that said it mm. i don't think interesting um, yeah, i'm not yeah. a superstitious man but that's yeah. kind of that's how it appeared to be. I wasn't thinking. Uh, my mind went blank. I was tired that day, yeah. and that's what I said. And then, as soon as I said that, everything was right in the world, wow. and yeah. um, I've never looked back ever since. That's amazing. That's like almost as if your, you know, your subconscious just kind of took over for a second. You know. Yeah, it, I think it was. Yeah. And just, just said, okay, this is this is it, guys. You know. Yeah, it knew in that mm. moment exactly mm. what needed to be said. And that's the best decision I've made in my life so far. Wow. I've made a few decisions that I think have been really good decisions. Yes. That's the just best a few. decision. <laughs> just a few. Yeah. Just a Everything few. else I was coasting along. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, you know, I was just, a, you know, I was just in this uh, big, I don't know what you, what metaphor we could use, a, a river full of um, 
students <laughs> who just get drifted along with everyone like there's this yes i know what you mean yeah you just go along with the current yeah just just the tribe around you you just kind of get swept (laughs) up by i think that's a really good lesson as well as to because i think it's a big mistake i made in college was um not listening to that inner voice and just being allowed to be swept along yeah you know and and because when you're by yourself you think okay this is great i I can do this and this but when you end up back in the class or you're uh, surrounded by your peers um, there is kind of an overwhelming force mm. uh, in, involved in that kind of social situation, I think, definitely. It's really interesting to hear. Yeah, there's like, that's, I think that's why it's so terrifying to, when, when you graduate, the idea of graduation yeah. from, from university or, or whatever your highest level of education is that you decide to go down, mm, mm. Uh, it's terrifying because you've had this current your whole life and Mm -hmm. you've just Mm -hmm. been with the current and then there's this abyss it goes over a waterfall and there's nothing (laughs) you don't know there's no one to help you yeah yeah Uh, there's no one guiding you there's no formula there's no instruction manual anymore to life yeah and and that's well that's how i felt at least and um and and then what happens is you end up making Mm. structures for yourself you end up making these these rules and these currents you build your own current and i suppose that's better than using someone else's yeah it's up to you at that point though but people need rules people <laughs> they if they don't have rules they find rules they, yes, they'll like yeah. attach them that's why cults are so mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that's why cults are a thing that 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 pop up they bubble up mm-hmm. in societies and it's it's mm-hmm. it's exactly at those times people who have recently graduated are really susceptible to joining cults and i think it, it's a it's it's that i think yeah. they they latch on to something anyway it's just a yes. big tangent we're, talk, we're talking <laughs> yeah. about alexander petrov today yes. <laughs> whiplash yeah. there speaking of cults yeah um, <laughs> not at all but that's fascinating as well like i mean i think that's a really interesting and i think a lot of people can probably empathize with that idea you know of of waywardness you know and, and yeah. trying to find a cause or a calling and and finding something bigger than yourself to believe in you know yeah and, yeah. and of course you know some people are lucky like us where um they they find a, a passion that helps them through life you know and that's oh, yeah and that's something like animation you know is um when i was on your podcast i think i talked a bit about it of like you know it's nice to have that that anchor while you're while you're swimming along in this kind of huge ocean of life. Yeah. And speaking of swimming and anchors, let's talk, let's talk about, well, you can introduce who you decided to talk about today. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm madly obsessed with this Russian reclusive mm. Mm. artist called Alexander Petrov. Amazing, now, yeah. I'm actually not even sure, I, I wasn't even sure when I told you that I'm choosing... Uh, Alexander Petrov. I didn't know how to spell it because I think there's like a Russian way of spelling it, mm-hmm. and there's a the like more Westernized way of spelling it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I think you might have to write both in the description because <laughs> honestly, like it, it's like half and half. When I when I look him up, some people mm. use the Westernized version and the the difference in spelling by the way is there's just i think it, from what i see anyways there's alexander the russian way just doesn't have an e or at the end doesn't have an e yeah, yeah or just does, doesn't have an e at the end no something like that yeah otherwise it'd be alexander <laughs> and the western way has an e like we're more alexander whereas that's alexander so this mm-hmm. guy it's it's hard to fathom how amazing he is yes yeah i continue to struggle to wrap my head around it. Mm, mm, mm. And the best part is, I think he's still like a hidden gem yeah. because he's he's not on that many people's radars when we're talking about the the greats of animation auteurs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do believe he comes into that category of auteur because he, well, I, I'll get into mm. auteur theory in a, in mm. a bit, I mm. think. Um, the, the, the way you'll recognize his style, I think, is that, well, first of all, it's, breathtakingly beautiful yeah stunning i would class it as like um artwork from the from romanticism Mm -hmm. i believe that's the art movement yeah i think it's called romanticism if you look up um paintings in that of that kind of art movement Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but it's film um he's animated it he uses his primarily his forefinger and he uh has this uh light table which is uh backlit and there's a glass panel and he will put 
oil paint down. It's this special translucent yeah. paint which allows light to shine through from behind. Yeah. And he will smudge and and move about this paint to create his frames. Mm, mm. Um, now, this is a destructive process, yeah. which is what sets apart this process from, from similar ones, because you can look up um, uh, animation filmmakers like E.M. Cooper, yeah. and, and that one that you talked about, uh, you showed me that the other time, what's, what's, uh, what's their name? The Irish um, studio that did the, uh, the Bird and the Whale. Oh, yes, Paper Panther. Paper yeah. Panther, yeah. So th- those ones, they actually... Well, actually, Paper Panther is a destructive pr- yeah, process yeah, that they use, I think. Yeah. But it can be separated from some of those other kind of painterly stop motion mm-hmm. processes because um, basically you, you don't keep any of the frames. Mm-hmm. Um, as It's a continuous animation method. So one of the principles of animation is continuous versus yeah. pose to pose. Yeah. Um, he only uses continuous, to my knowledge, which means that he starts at frame one, he will paint frame one, yeah. He will then erase where the character, if it, if the character's moving, he will erase mm-hmm. where that character was, and he'll paint the new one in. Yeah. And and he'll just do that again and again and again. Yeah. Using his finger, his primarily his thumb and forefinger, to just smudge and move and manipulate the oil mm-hmm. um, into these incredible. Like you've got to see it to believe yeah. it. You yeah. You can't. Hundred percent. You can't. I, I'm not doing it justice by using these superlatives. <laughs> you need to see it. So please, yeah, oh, stop, you can add stop in some, right now. If you can edit them in, or or if you can link to some. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess on YouTube I can I can clip some of the clips in, but I, I'll definitely have some links to uh, his his uh, work Great. in the description. You know, so if you want to pause now and go have a look at something like you know. Old Man the Sea or, you know, Dream of a Ridiculous Man or The Mermaid, any of this yeah. kind of stuff that he's done. Just please, it's only, they're all exceptionally, I think most of them aren't longer than 20 yeah. minutes, you know, might be as long as... They are short films. Yeah. Short films and they are stunning. Yeah. And then come back here to thank us. In the <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You 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 brought it up. <laughs> well, you you allowed me to. <laughs> <laughs> you enabled me. I ena- the enabler. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th- I think for me when I first came across Petrov's work, um, I think it might have been he did an advertisement for Coca Cola with, yeah. with Santa Claus, yeah. and it's that very painterly um, one where the kids are like looking at him as he's drinking, you know, Coca Cola at the yeah. at the fireplace. But again, it's it's very hard to talk about this with words. You know, I mean, words really fail us all the time. But mm. like, I think he said that he finds he paints with his fingers because that allows him to feel like there's no obstacles in his way and he's much more connected yeah. to the image like he, i think he said it's his body connected yes, exactly i want to even take that further yes. and say that you know we can look at this in a poetic sense yes um i'm going to put this on yeah. on the idea but like you can see his fingerprint Oh, in yeah. every frame. Wow. In yeah. fact, everything is made out of his fingerprint. Now, the fingerprint is unique to every human body. There's a different one. Yes, yeah. And that is his. It's like, it, it's his through mm. and through. It can't be mistaken for anyone yeah. else because it's his fingerprint and it's all made up of these little fingerprint marks. And yeah. it's it's his body directly onto this paint. It's this, And it's largely unedited. It's mm-hmm. large, largely unedited. No, nope. there's no Adobe After Effects. Mm-hmm. There's no Adobe Photoshop. Uh, no little touch-ups here and there. Um, and and it's very much in the kind of Russian style of oh, things. Very much, you know, yeah. I think I do think that Ru- the Russians have this. Well, maybe it's a stereotype, but this kind of fetish for hard work. It seems, mm-hmm. and um, I, I've not seen many ex- examples that prove that to to not be true. And th- this is one of those yeah, ones that yeah. was like, mm, it does fit with the stereotype. It's <laughs> hard, t- hard work to do this. Yeah. Super hard work. It takes him years, like I think two and a half years to make Old Man in the Sea. And he, he animated that with his son, Dmitry Petrov. So it's mm. him. So I think, I remember looking at the credits of that short film and it's like all these producers, all these sound engineers, all this extra stuff and then animation two people and you're just like what yeah. you just your mind is blown because yeah i mean something like that is and that's you know 
I would say that's kind of in the middle of his career uh, if you look at kind of his short films and whatever he's done like it's a huge standout because obviously it's it's beautiful there's there's subtleties to it and um, i know it, it won an oscar at the best animated short as well and mm. um, i think that's our main kind of connection mm. here with in in the west to yes. knowing who he is because i think that's because he won that Oscar, they I think they did send a, a film crew out to actually come and see how he does it. Interview him. And, yeah, and then yeah. they gave it English subtitles, thankfully. So that's <laughs> I think that's the main way that we are able to see in because otherwise it would just be like, who is this mysterious guy? Yeah, yeah completely guessing. And I, and I like the way you described him as kind of a recluse because that, that, that interview they did, you know, with him and they kind of followed him around a bit a yeah. little bit in his studio and kind of had a peek into his daily life is fascinating because he's just simple he's very a simple, simple man yeah. he, he he said he he kind of aspires to be like a farmer mm, mm, he, you know yeah. he, he really likes the idea of being a farmer so he's kind of like salt of the earth kind of yeah dedicated to his craft guy. you know yeah just like a you know very very humble simple man who creates these dreams yeah. you know he, mm. he he dreams and he'll mm. he'll manifest these dreams into animation and that's really that is mm. utilizing the medium mm. like nothing mm. else yeah you know um yeah. and i know he has like a very but you know his characters have photorealistic proportions he's not really caricaturing that mm -hmm. In that extreme, like mm -hmm. someone like Chuck Jones would, yeah. but but then where he takes that, it means that he can continue to realistically render these things while they're doing amazing, yeah. these these amazing things that you know, going into these dream experiences, he'll often mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. melt away the walls of reality into these dream landscapes yeah. and, and these incredible camera moves the the character will suddenly grow wings and fly mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. or the, the the letter that the boy has received i think in the film my love mm -hmm. he um he opens the letter and it and it transforms into a parachute or, or like yes. a hot air balloon that yeah. carries him carries him off yeah um it's so romantic it's yeah. beautiful and it's this is how animation should be used, in my opinion. It's like the best way of using it. It's, it's doing what you can't mm. do with mm. film. It's doing yes. what you can't do with other mediums. Yeah. And, and as well, like because he chooses, I think this is really key to my understanding of or my connection with his work. I know that he takes caricatures of or not caricatures, sorry. He takes portraits of people he knows and puts them in the film. Mm. So like I, I know in Old Man in the Sea, it was his step or not his stepdad, his father-in-law. Father-in-law, yeah. Old man on. But because they're so real, and I use that term loosely, like what we recognize as real, and all yeah. there's such a devotion to detail in his films of to how things move, you know, secondary action. They talk about, you know, I'll give you an example. You've even spoken about it before, you know, when the line goes taut and strong in Old Man in yeah. the Sea, when it hooks onto the fish <laughs> and it twangs yeah. in the air and the water flicks off it. He's able to kind of marry all this realism with that kind of melting dreamlike metaphor transformations um there's if if you want a really quick look at his transformation i think he did the short work he did for firebird the the winter olympics one mm. it's just quickly from point to point to point where like you know it could be someone sitting in a restaurant that transforms them into an elevator as the camera pushes away um or i remember in what was it? Dreams of a uh, what was it? Dreams called? of a ridiculous Rid man. Ridiculous man. I think where, that's what it's called. I might be. Wrong. Yes, that's it. Yeah, dreams of a ridiculous yeah. man. Um, where he, you know, there's all these amazing things like a tree transforms into a woman, and then the woman transforms into the sky, and the sky transforms into a pool of water. And the water then transforms into like a baby's cot and the cot into flowers. And it's just this kind of constant flow state that that his medium really allows to bring forward because it flows. Yeah, it just melts like in, but you don't it melts, yeah. you, you don't notice it, but you you allow it to happen because of, I think, the oil painting. It just naturally allows that to happen. You know, does he, that make he's sense? He's a visual poet. Yes. And it, it's. And and here's one of the ideas I had with this. It's like it's mm. emotional logic and it's emotional mm -hmm. priority. Yeah. Um. He 
you know, he will erode the physical boundaries of a space if mm -hmm. emotionally it makes sense to. And and it's very much told subjectively. And I, I love yeah, yeah. I love subjective filmmaking. I believe film is a subjective medium. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you cannot avoid that. So yeah. you might as well embrace it. Yeah. And he, you know, he uh, very sincerely will will be in he will be telling the story from the character's point of view, whichever yes, character yeah. he deems to be yeah. the main, you know, the, the main character who it, mm -hmm. it will be like within their head. That's why when they slip in, when yeah. they fall asleep, they slip into a dream. It just, it just yeah. keeps going yeah. and it will. And in a dream, I think we're a lot more, um, we're a lot more able to kind of, um, well, we're, we're, we're unhinged from, yeah. Well, it's like, you, it's like you said, the, the walls of reality just kind of melt away, Yeah, you know, and I think that's a really great way of putting it because he just pushes aside things that will get in the way of, of someone's need to experience something. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really succinct way of, of, of looking at his work. I think that's really intelligent of, because I know he said as well that if in choosing a work to make, it has to kind of reflect some nature of his soul, you know, mm. so he, he is putting himself in that person's mind to be able yeah. to kind of flow around like that like even even in the mermaid where it's this it's a really lovely dance between like this older man and this younger man mm. and their interactions with you know a mermaid in in the water and the old man's memories swirling into modern time and and the kind of allegory that he brings with that yeah it, that's so interesting that he's a, he's just able to find a medium that matches exactly yeah what he wants to say i i know flow state when i see it like when i see it yeah. in some work i'm like oh like, he was in flow state <laughs> yeah. and i think everyone's experienced flow state at one point or another maybe yeah. not in yeah. animation i mm. have I, i've been lucky enough to experience the ecstasy of flow state mm. in animation well, and, yeah. and what happens is um whatever you are animating you become that thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. incredible it's like yeah. um yeah, so so if you're animating, like it, when he was animating the fish, I I yeah. bet you he he was the fish. Yeah, I'd say so. He was yeah. the fish. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that was him. Like his soul was in there. Yeah. and that's what you get when you when you reach flow state, and you forget you know <clears throat> you forget the context in which you're mm. you're animating. You forget that it's a a studio mm -hmm. uh, setting or, or whatever. You forget that you're hungry. You forget that your back yes. aches, yeah, and you are that thing. <laughs> your hand is like, cramping, for, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why I, I, I try and animate a lot of birds. Like, mm. if there's an excuse to animate a bird, I'll wow. animate a bird because I love flying. Amazing, yeah. I think that's fascinating. Like, I really, I really do. It's, it's funny you talk about you know flow state and that he was the fish. I mean, of course, that's probably why he picked Hemingway's story because <laughs> you know the line that, yeah. you know, um, I, you know. He, we are brothers now, you know, we are. And there's that whole scene where he's like swimming underwater with the fish, but then the water becomes the sky and all, yeah. all the creatures in the ocean are flying in the, in the air. And you're just like, my God, like, this is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is I just think, beyond. Uh, yeah. Like he, uh, yeah, he's just incredible. <laughs> words can, uh, w words can't really uh, do it, but yeah, I think the reason he, um, maybe the reason he chose the old man in the sea mm -hmm. and perhaps even uh, I, I'd like to also compare him to another uh, yeah, go animator who, who is I, I'm incredibly uh, I, I'm a big admirer of yeah um, so old man in the sea is a, a particularly interesting one yes because that is a film about an old man who takes on an extraordinary task that he yeah. doubts he'll be able to do yeah it's it's an inner battle as much as it's mm -hmm. an external battle yes. it's about you know he's seeing he's trying to prove to himself that he can still do it that that, that he's still able to do it now there is a very very strong parallel between the the story and the meta story yes yeah. Uh, the story is 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 you know the one written by Ernest Hemingway. Mm -hmm. uh, the meta story is Alexander Petrov taking on this massive task. I don't know what the runtime of the Old Man in the Sea is, but it's it's, it's into about 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah, twenty minutes for one guy. 
to make the visuals to for 20 minutes and one guy and his son sure but i think it's <laughs> probably him leading the way yeah, you know? yeah 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 um he identifies with the old man 100 percent. he identifies yeah, with 100 percent. and and the, so here's the the part where i compare him to another amazing amazing animation mm -hmm. auteur yeah. frederick back oh my i was so hoping you'd bring him up like I mean, yes. it, it, absolutely yes 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 it was a way up between alexander petrov and frederick back for this uh podcast episode i mean know? the man who planted trees the is man just... who planted trees exactly yes. and and crack as well they're just yeah 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 please continue so yeah. particularly with the man who planted trees okay let's have a little mm -hmm. look at the story yeah bearing in mind this guy hand drew thousands upon thousands upon mm -hmm. thousands mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. frames ha hand colored and drew yes uh over years and years with no with with no uh, mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. immediate return on investment no no pats on the back no very little encouragement he just worked in solitude now the story of the man who planted trees is a is a solitary man who lives in yep. a mountain somewhere yep. in France, who <laughs> decides to every day plant one hundred trees, and mm -hmm. and it it didn't it was it didn't matter uh, whether the trees were eaten, yep. whether the trees were were um, blown you know if the seeds were blown away on the yeah. wind, yeah. Uh, which often happened. He said like out of out of those first 1000 trees you know only half of them mm -hmm. uh, managed to make it to saplings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but he just he would do it every, every day. day and with yeah. such meticulous care and devotion and and focus as well um there's mm -hmm. a big parallel there as well mm -hmm. you know and and i think maybe i may i think maybe frederick back was was drawing strength from the main character that he was drawing like they mm -hmm. were he was helping him in that impossible journey of making this film yeah. yeah and and i'm i wonder if he could have done it about anything else he had to have chosen something that he really cared about yeah yeah you you don't see many films like that because there's such a hurdle to making a film like that you can only do it mm -hmm. if you if you go a long period of time years and years mm -hmm. of your life mm -hmm. without any pats on the back yeah without validation yeah uh, and and so it's very difficult, and that means it narrows it down to just a few people. There's a few people in um, in the world. I'd say there's a handful of people who can do that kind of thing. Yeah, that's two yeah. of them. Uh, the other one I'd say is Yuri Norstein. Yes, we've got to drop his name <laughs> yeah, in there. Absolutely, and, as well. Yeah, you know, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the overcoat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the overcoat. But, but Nor Norstein's work as well, like Hedgehog in the Fog, is just lovely. Yeah. you know, um, that's a great one. You yeah. know, it's funny actually. I think, um, I think uh, Petrov and, and Norstein worked on Winter Days. They both did segments for they collaborated. It. Yes. Um, wow. Well, I don't think they would, like everyone did their own segment. I don't think they collaborated. You know. Um, okay. But I I know like Isao Takata did a segment for that as well, and Mark Baker did did segments for that as well. It's really interesting. Um, Winter Days. Winter yeah. Days, yeah. Um, by uh, Kawamoto. I can't remember his first name. Um, Is that the one with the? Um, did Frederick Back uh, do like? A, a, I'm I might be getting them mixed up now, but like mm -hmm. a, a, a sort of World War Two battle scene. No, I don't no. think it's in that. That must uh, be a different one. Yeah, Damn. but I could be completely wrong. I, yeah. <laughs> I need to watch it again. I just remember um, seeing it years ago and going, wow, this is just, it's so, because each segment is like a poem, basically, and they mm. each take a, a line or a, um, a stanza from a poem and, and go for it and just make their own thing. Like uh, Petrov's one is basically this this child, <laughs> you know, living in rural Japan by himself and mm. a shadow of a, of a crow appears at the door. And the child is just trying to scare it away with a toy. And it's only like one minute. <laughs> That's it, yeah. you know. But it's, again, like these these are all really poetic um, filmmakers that understand, especially Takahata as well. Like, in, I know we talked about this before, mm. um, where that like art itself never has to be realistic. You know, it, it, it yeah. kind of transcends that. It kind of speaks to the ultimate 
mystery. Yeah, that's when things get exciting. You yes, know? yeah. And I think people could discredit mm. people like Alexander Petrov yeah. um, for having impressive work. Like, yes. that yeah. to me... That to me is an insult <laughs> to him. <laughs> to, to, well, I better not say that about your work. Even. <laughs> I mean, it okay. It is impressive. Yeah, but it's of more course. Than yeah, that. I know what you mean. It's so yeah. much more. It's per, it's personal. Yeah. It's um, mm-hmm. I, I aspire to have work like that. That's more than impressive. There's there's more depth to it than just like wow. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> yeah. That's nice. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, that's a pretty that's a pretty picture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Of course, it, uh, that's a good start. It's a good place to start. Yes, and um, yeah. sometimes I really struggle to to just get there, you know. Mm, uh, mm-hmm. the, I have this process in, in the animation process, which is like, um, there's like an order of priorities. And okay, yeah. the first on the list is to be understood. That's the first yes, one. Yeah. So when I'm making a storyboard, I'm not trying to make it pretty. I'm not trying to make it anything. I'm trying to be understood. I'm trying to make yes. it as understandable as possible. Yes. Then I'll try and maybe make make it a little bit aesthetically pleasing, and and but but the main thing after that is that I will try and mm. uh, make it subjective, make it the, the subjective point of view. So if the character is feeling weak, we frame him from above. We we just put the camera yes. above, yeah, and it it makes the audience feel how the character is feeling. So that's that's very important to me to make it subjective film. Mm-hmm. But just getting to the stage of making it understood. I struggle with <laughs> just that <laughs> just like you know communicating the bare bones plot mm. is hard yes yeah it gotta is be hard. real with you it's hard yeah to um to go that many steps beyond that to like <laughs> yeah to, to 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 make it like to introduce uh these uh themes which are timeless yeah i, I really care about timeless themes as well yes like yeah you know, there's a lot to be said for for relevance and um, mm-hmm. for for something being you know uh, cutting edge fingers fingers on the pulse. Mm-hmm. I think something like South Park does that very well because of yes. their production method. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think you're right there. They're, they're designed just to be topical, you know. Yeah, they and yeah. they they achieve it. You know, yeah. they they are so they are so quick to respond to what's happening right now yes uh, which is yeah. really impressive yeah but um i really i like that you can watch a film by uh, by one of these great masters and mm-hmm. you can watch it 50 years from now 100 years from now yeah um and and it will have the same i think it will have the same effect i think you can i think you can feel it because uh mm. You know, a lot of it is about the human condition, which doesn't really change. Yes, and hasn't changed in, in yeah. thousands of years. And I know the last time we were, we were speaking on in your podcast about people like Joseph Campbell and, and how they yeah. went off and studied mythology and basically found the kind of the monomythological truth of that is humanity, you know, yeah. that these stories are. And timeless is a great word for it. I love the word timeless. Yeah. That's kind of my, that's like a, a, a really big compliment i can give something yeah it's like it's timeless yeah there's a quote that comes to my head head from campbell and i think it applies to certainly um petrov's work which is you know this stuff that we're trying to talk about is just beyond all categories that the best things can't be told because they transcend all thought yeah and the second best things are misunderstood because they're those are the thoughts that are supposed to refer to the things that we can't think about Mm. and then you know all we get stuck with is the thoughts and then the third best things are what we talk about. So we're already two steps away from talking about this, being able to describe this perfectly. But if you go and watch it, you get it, you yeah. understand it. Yeah. And it comes through the visual metaphors on screen, whereas we can sit here and talk about it, but we're kind of struggling to find the words yeah. <laughs> to put into place. I think the words can reinforce yes. it. I yeah. think, you know, it, it can like add some kind of reinforcement and it can you can feel something mm-hmm. intuitively yes. and then if someone puts a word to it puts a name to it then you're like yeah. oh yeah okay you you were feeling yes. it too yeah and it, and it acts as a guide as well as to yeah you know someone's point of view as to where they're looking and what they're thinking about yeah i don't necessarily want to tell people how to feel about a, a certain yeah. Yeah. film 
you know i i don't want to be like an authority saying like this is a good film this is a bad film you know like yeah, that's so yeah. and so many people so many critics fall into the trap yes, of doing yeah. that and, and i think it's it's not it's it's by and large not good but at the same mm. time i love mm. the movie experience of mm. watching a film with with multiple people and coming out of the th- you know coming out of the film theater and then yeah. um on the train journey home talking yes. about it and yeah and discussing it and, and digesting um, and, and it, yeah. digesting it and mm-hmm. saying wasn't it amazing when that thing happened and then and then it carries on into the house into the kitchen and you're sitting around the kitchen yeah. having tea uh, you know maybe leaning up against the kitchen counter just mm. pondering on these ideas yes. this pandora's box yeah. that's opened in your mind because of this film that's this introduced you to this new idea i love that i live yeah I, I love that too I, I miss it i remember we used to some of my friends we used to go to the cinema in, in dublin and then we'd wander across to this bar slash restaurant called kimchi which kind of did korean food but mm. also was an, an irish bar and uh, we would just sit there and ponder and discuss and think and talk uh, into until the place closed really you know because it's it that's that's a real connection there you know it's like those yeah. nights in college where you stay up till 4 a.m talking to someone yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and there's so much of like my criteria of like what i'm looking for in new friends and people i actually want to spend <laughs> yes, time with is yeah, more people yeah. like that who are open to doing that instead of just saying Oh, it's been five minutes. I better be going now. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. yeah. But this the search continues. Yeah. Off we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting by yourself. Well, there's a good community here on online with mm. lots of people who who are happy to to talk about it. Yeah. Um, I just got to make sure that it doesn't. I there are people who are who I who have come over to my channel who. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to be careful here to not go into an angry yeah, okay. rant. They are ranking things. Yes. Objectively. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, it uh, makes me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> and I, I'm aware that on some level, I am definitely a, a hypocrite in that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I'm just like, oh, here are my top 10 favorite films. This is why mm-hmm. I've put... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know v for vendetta second to crouching tiger hidden dragon yeah, and here's yeah, the yeah, reasons yeah. um like, you know i i am ranking things in yes, my own mind yeah. as well but um you know maybe it's just because i disagree with their <laughs> choice of rankings like if they had the same <laughs> ranking as me and they're yeah, like you yeah totally you know get what? It, crouching man. tiger hidden dragon <laughs> is my favorite film as well then i'd be like i'm perfectly happy for you to rank these things <laughs> It's just started on my channel as well. Um, oh, are you getting them? Yeah, they, they asked me to set up a little thing to do ranking stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, it's no, no skin off my teeth. You can all talk and discuss. And, <laughs> you know, they do it by, you know, different directors or they'll choose a studio or whatever. And, you know, it's it's fine. But there's a reason why I'm probably the same as you. Like, I never wanted to do reviews and I never wanted to mm. do like top 10 lists on animation or anything like that because I just don't right. feel like A, I can justify it for myself and B, I don't think I have the ability to review a film to the level that people expect. If if, if I was to review something, it would end up being a discussion like this. You know what I mean? Um, rather yeah. than um, a, an objective uh, kind of like, okay, three out of five stars. You know, I just... Yeah, I might do it in my yeah. head automatically when I watch something. I'm like, oh, well, you know, it didn't really speak to my soul the way other films have. But um, mm. it's just something that I definitely, I do shy away from big time because I think as well, it, it closes you off from, well, I could be wrong, but I find it it's tough to open up discussions then when you, you put a very fervent opinion. Uh, no, that's wrong. No, ignore it. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Ignore what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I don't know where you were going with that, but yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's in the back I, of my mind somewhere, but I, I just haven't found it. It yeah. it did give me ideas though. So, you know, I I think first of all we got to start with the base assumption that films are a net positive as long as they're yes. not like incitement of violence or hate speech or anything like that, that I consider each film to be a net positive, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and that goes all the way down to like, you know, f- 
films that people consider to be oh it's so bad like the room yes people people consider that to be so bad but it's brought so much joy into people's lives mm-hmm. i do mm-hmm. not consider it to be a bad film no. yeah uh whether by accident or on purpose it's a it's a good film it's a really memorable film <laughs> yes. yeah I, I think um i had a i had a direct mm-hmm. experience a, a practical experience which taught me a lot of lessons in uh in this and that was when i became the host of the animated guild uh short film contest yes yeah um so i had first year of that and when did you do the first year the first year we we basically gave film we gave everyone just anyone who anyone was free to enter it was completely free they kept the rights to their films it's just a way to encourage more people to make films you know uh, it's a good thing for the ecosystem and um has to be a minute or over in length um you know there's small prizes like we couldn't mm-hmm. afford mm-hmm. big prizes um it's mainly the the honor you know of receiving <laughs> you know the first place or something but you see it's a contest yes. and someone yes, has to yes, win yes. and and so there has to be a ranking yes. system and there has to be criteria yeah. there have to be points out of 100 from 1 to 100 how well mm. did this do um straight away there's a big paradox there I am a believer that the ranking just doesn't make sense mm, for mm-hmm. art. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't work. But but it's it's got to be done somehow. One way or another, mm-hmm. we've got to come to the conclusion mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. who the winner is. What would you rather have as as someone who who's uh made, spent a lot of time like a year making a short film and then it's like I felt like giving this one the main mm. prize. That doesn't make you feel that good, does it? Well, yeah, as as other contestants, sure. Yeah, yeah. if I say we've got these different criteria, we're judging it based mm-hmm. on the art, the animation, the originality, and the entertainment. Yes. And, and by the way, for, for this coming year, we've added another one, which is sound, mm-hmm. because so many mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. neglected their sound. They had no sound. It was just... And, and, and sound Super is so important. important. You yeah. only realize it when it's done badly or mm-hmm. when it's not done at all. But sound mm-hmm. is so important. Anyway... Um, so I had to, myself and the other judges, I brought on two guest judges, which was Hyun, who's been around for ages in the, in the stick figure animation Mm -hmm. community. He's a great guy, really, really, uh, smart guy, uh, really nice guy. And, um, Astartes, which is his screen name. It's his, uh, it's not his real name. I don't know his real name, actually. (laughs) Um, he's, um, but his work is... Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Like he is incredible. Yeah. Um, just a- anyone who is wondering, just type in a status yeah. into Google. Especially if you're a Warhammer 40k mm. fan, you will love it. But even if you're mm. not, they are just. I mean, visually <laughs> cracking yeah, just, yeah. films, 3D, um, based in the Warhammer 40k universe. Um, this incredible knowledge of just cinematography. Yeah. I think really really yeah. incredible cinematography mm-hmm. incredible action yep. choreography sequencing um everything done flawlessly yeah. by one guy yeah. and you think no surely this is a studio this is a hollywood veteran mm. no and i really hope that games workshop has has like identified him and has yeah. said hey can we like executive produce you to make something for us like officially <laughs> yeah. Because if they're not, they're just oh, they're wasting, that's yeah. such a waste of yeah. like well, you know they they've got to identify that opportunity. Anyway, um, mm. so myself and these two judges have to come to the conclusion of you know not only first place but second and third place yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, and we had this point system and it worked it worked well and I do believe that the I. I I'm happy with the way it turned out. You know, great. there yeah. were some great entries yeah. and they deservingly won high high rank yeah. high place yeah. placement. Yeah. And um uh but here's where I made the big mistake. I I will fess up to this, I'll own up to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I decided that in the contest, in the video itself, I would show the rankings. Uh, so okay. I would show yeah. you know 
this scored this much for originality, this much for entertainment, this much for art, and this much for animation. Yeah, yeah. Even if you get 99 out of 100 for, for something like animation, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, they marked me down. Yeah, I get They what you took mean. a point yeah. away for something. Nothing's going to be nothing's gonna be adequate apart from 100 for all of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I think, in retrospect, I should have... We should have had the point system, not disclosed it, yeah. just had that privately yeah. and said that, hey, we've we've got this point system of how we're judging mm. it. Here are the placements. Yeah. Like here's where everyone placed in the in the contest. Yeah. Um because I just think I don't know, it, it kind of promotes, it encourages that kind of categorization that we've been talking about that we, we don't really like. Yeah. And, but but I couldn't see another way when mm. I when I did it. I couldn't. I didn't know how else to do it. We have to justify for some somehow. We have to justify how to what why first place is first place and third place is third mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, my friend actually gave me a really really simple solution, which I was just like, it hadn't occurred to me somehow. Yeah. But yeah. he just said, why don't you just say for each one when you're talking about each each entry, just say the thing that they did really well. Yes. You know, say, name the quality. Yes. Yeah. And just ignore any kind of deficiency you think it might have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just ignore yeah. it because it's net positive. Mm. And I was like, oh, why didn't I think of that before? Yeah. It's so obvious. It's so simple. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're doing for this this year. I think so many people. You you probably got one as well. I mean, you can talk about this, but like, do you? Because I know I do. Mm-hmm. Do you have a film that you think it's a one day film Mm -hmm. like one day i might make this film Mm -hmm. i've got this idea Mm -hmm. probably never gonna make it or i got this idea maybe when i'm better at with my current skill level then i'll 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 make it when i'm much better than i am now and that turns into a never (laughs) yeah well it definitely turns it into a never you're right tomorrow is you know one of those never words yeah it's it's really smart because it it gives people confidence, you know, and, and confidence is is something generally that you only get from other people, you know, like, I mean, you can be happy about your own work or something. But when someone comes up and says, oh, yeah, that's good, then you actually truly start to believe it. Yeah. Like you, you can constantly doubt yourself. Oh, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure. But then when someone says, oh, yeah, no, no, I liked what you did there. Then that, that kind of gives confidence in that. And that's really as a, mm. as a mentor, as a guiding principle, that that's really the best gift you can give someone is just that little bit of confidence. So saying, hey, we really love to see your short films, that's confidence that you're you're giving mm. someone. And that's a really wonderful thing to, to have. It's a really nice thing to, to give to people. And it, it does complete the, the cycle. I do believe that film and, and animation should be seen as a conversation. Yes. And so you yeah. need a, you need someone who's listening or someone who's watching, someone who's experiencing mm. it. Otherwise, mm. uh, it, it the the statement is not completed. It's yes. like sending a message in a bottle uh, if you're stranded on an island. If that yeah. if that bottle ends up sinking to the ocean floor, it's like... Yes. And that's a tragedy. Mm. That's a real tragedy. Like, that whole thing was in vain, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. effort. So, I mean, it's important. The audience aspect of it is, like, who, who's going to hear this? Who's going to watch this? Uh, it's very important. Yeah, big time. I mean, you don't just watch it mm. to look at it your, yourself, you know. I mean, Some people do, though. Some people say mm. that they say, "I'm making this for me." I'm not. I'm not here to say they're wrong. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Uh, you know, y- you're allowed to. You yeah. know, I think I think every filmmaker makes it for them, though. But they want the the discussion, like you said. I yeah. I I don't really know. I, yeah. I don't want to speak for like every filmmaker. I know there are filmmakers out there who. who I, who I've talked to, who who say I'm making this for me. Mm, mm. I'm not making this for anyone else. I'm making this for me, and um, I'm not one of those filmmakers. Like I, yeah. I want to have an impact. I want to help in some way, and um, there's nothing that gets me more excited than using using my ability as someone who who can make films mm-hmm. i have the capacity to yeah. make films i've made films and and to use that uh as like i don't know like a superpower to to actually affect mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. instead of it being like this uh, there's a word beginning with m that i'm not going to say on this 
podcast, <laughs> but it, it has one, two, three, four syllables. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's kind of like that otherwise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit rude of me, but I don't know. I, it's uh, Otherwise, it's like, I think it's kind of sad if it doesn't uh, go outside of that. I, I understand that like, the individual is a is a person and you're allowed to make yourself feel happy you're allowed to, you can do whatever you want to mm-hmm. do that, that mm-hmm. makes yourself feel happy that's cool but there's so much potential uh in in communication it's an it's a communication yes art. yeah it is 100 percent. i mean it always falls under communication as a category you know if, if we think about that in context of that idea of someone like petrov let's say who is very mm. reclusive you know very simple man but still puts his work out there all the time. Yeah, I think there has to be something. Uh, yeah, his films are very personal to him. Yes, but the, yeah. there has to be something in the back of his mind that's set, that's this letting him know, hey, other people are going to watch this. Yeah, let's uh, do a really good job on it and and make it really, you know, really entertaining, really really lovely. Yeah. because it is. You know, I think he. I think there is consideration there in his work for for the whoever's going to watch it. You know, it's yeah. otherwise it just wouldn't have the same effect. I don't think he'd be. Perhaps he'd be more indulgent in in things that don't have as much universal appeal. Yeah, much more um, experimental in, in some of the work. Possibly, I, d- I don't know. It's it's hard to know the mind of someone who <laughs> doesn't do a lot of interviews. Yeah, you know, we're, we're making a lot of guesses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, he um, unfortunately he he can't be with us. He can't speak English. So. <laughs> he can't. Yeah. Funny you should say he's here right now. Actually, let's get him, let's get him on the line. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. I'd probably faint. Oh, yeah. he isn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. But I, I love I love the way you talk about film. Like, I mean, one thing that, I mean, it comes up all the time in my head when I listen to you speak is, you know, Howard, your, your passion for animation comes across really hugely. And it's not just animation. Like, you, you appreciate the variety of forms you're very open-minded in thinking about new things. You never just kind of sit on what you've learned, you know. You're, you... It's a little, little bit restless, yes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but there's a great quality in that. I hope that restless nature won't, like, get in the way of me making something, <laughs> you know, that that's big like this, I, mm. honestly. Like, Would you sit down and plant trees for 20 years? It, it's no easy task. Mm. It's not easy to it's the, it's more the idea of like sitting still um mm, mm. I, I, I like right now my my preferred length of animation to do at least commercially for like for clients is mm-hmm. is between like <laughs> ideally like 10 seconds of animation <laughs> um cuz then it's just like you can move on. just an explosion of like my best Bring my yes. absolute best yeah. A game, and then move on to something else, and do something completely different, yeah. and and try and hop about. Like I've done a very diverse range of things recently. I, I worked for a, a pharmaceutical company to create wow. visuals for their. Uh, it, it's a it's a new type of um, cancer treatment. Um, wow! So yeah. so that's like one thing. But then I also did like a YouTube video intro for this guy who's who's uh, like a, a an R and B singer, wow. and it's so different it's like completely different but i love that i love mm-hmm. that i can hop about and travel and stuff but um planting trees in the in yeah. the metaphorical sense you know <laughs> planting a, a forest full of trees is uh is uh, it it requires you to have that dedicated focus mm. and that could be the hardest thing of all that could be the hardest thing of all do you think that yeah. an optimism comes through that dedication of focus you know the the kind of idea to study life be able to recreate yeah that that i'm struggling for words here but to recreate your not just your observations but your your kind of emotional connections on and through your work i don't know i i think that th- this is like a it's definitely just a theory but i i've noticed that mm-hmm. people as they get older they have a greater capacity to focus on one thing mm-hmm. so it might be that i'm just young right now i'm I'm 26 years old yeah. um to some people that's old and to some people that's, that's very young really young <laughs> yeah. it, it, it depends it depends who you are yeah. and what perspective you're looking at that from but i i think um maybe i'll have a greater capacity to focus on on something mm. and and maybe that's about just you know 
whittling things down to the, the core of what you find important. And there's all this stuff that you, you like that you might have seen on, maybe you were scrolling on Instagram and you saw it and you were like, oh, that looks good. Maybe I'll try that style. Yeah. And then you realize, hmm, actually, it's nice, but it's not what's important to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, I think maybe that's on a greater scale, that's something that that um, an older artist is able to do more than a younger artist. I I recently made a video about just talking, kind of discussing about the personality that comes with Mm -hmm. age specifically um, and how like, yeah, like there's a, there's certainly an attention span thing and it's something that I, that's the battle for me. Um, Interesting. it's, It's a battle for me to, I don't get artist block where, I think the typical idea of artist block is where um, uh, someone is does not have the energy to to make something for a while, uh, or, or there's also called burnout. There's mm-hmm. another thing called burnout, yeah. which is like after a big project, they don't have the energy. And yeah. I yeah. haven't experienced that. Maybe that's just because I haven't worked on a big enough project, perhaps. But I've worked on some pretty big projects yeah. um, compared to what some people would see like anyway where was i going with that you tell me (laughs) yeah i'm getting way too distracted but um i don't get that but i do get this kind of um restlessness when working on a big project especially you know if i'm like a month away from finishing an animation project Mm -hmm. and i just start coming up with all these ideas of things i want to do as soon as i yes get out of this project Um, and it's torturous it's really like well the way i the the way i solve it is just by daydreaming so i'll just daydream Mm. of what i'm going to do when i get out of this project and it could be a really lovely project it could be really fun but i'll just be so restless on it so wow that's something i think i have to quell it's like an inner (laughs) battle it's like a spiritual it's like a spiritual battle like a battle of the soul these guys you know yuri nornstein Frederick Back, Alexandra Petrov. Um, you can add some more names to the list, mm-hmm. but those are the ones that are coming to mind. Mm-hmm. Their their souls are so strong. Mm. They are strong mm. souls, mm. and um, I I kind of aspire to have that the soul to be really strong, and um, I don't have that yet. I still care a lot about the the petty things. I think mm. most people do, and and. It's it's rare that you find someone with that kind of strength of will to see to see their vision through to the end when their vision is really big mm, and mm. Um, you know that's something that is if you have that you can do things that no one else can do mm-hmm. and I think if you don't have it by default which is most people uh, you you I think it's possible to to forge it mm-hmm. I think you can strengthen it you can mm-hmm. you can reinforce it by hard work probably you know I, I, that would be my guess um i'm gonna try <laughs> <laughs> well i think I, th- I think to be able to create something like let's say twenty nine yeah thousand frames for old man in the sea you definitely need a strength of or persistence of character you know persistence yeah to get through something like that Maybe finding the small rewards mm. in mm. just mm. finishing a frame and just being like, yeah. that frame felt good. I enjoy. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, I think that's one way to do it as well. To just uh, if you do that, if you if you see that as lots of little wins and you you genuinely enjoy drawing a frame, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that can really really help. Mm. In fact, I think that might be like your lifeline. Yes. And yeah. On a big project. I think you're right. Yeah. You know. I, I think that might be. I know I know. for me when I worked on kind of bigger projects, um, I was lucky for, let's say, the last TV show I was working on. It, I had a lot to do and they were all so vastly different that it was easy to move, to finish, move on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So one day I could be making all these kind of screen graphics for, you know, MI5 or something. And the next day I have to do um, background graphics for a, a news broadcast or something mm. like that. That's great, yeah. And and it's so vastly different that your brain has to like completely switch gears and yeah. and just. But it gives you a. It's almost like having a cup of tea in between, 
because you get to you have to give yourself the time to stop and think and consider the new yeah like how you're going to approach this next thing and what the design aspect of it is you know the design approach so that gives you that moment to kind of i remember just sitting there in the office sometimes just staring out the window Everyone else is running around and I'm just staring at the window having a cup of tea going, hmm, I wonder what this should look like, you know? And it, it gives you that kind of freedom of, ah, that's that's nice. And, and it's a little thing where you just tick the box. I had all these post-its with like things written on it that littered around the edge of my screen. And I tick a box and move on to the next one, tick a box, then take the post-it off, put it in the drawer. And by the end, I had this huge stack of post-its. And it's just like, OK, well, that's mm. I've, I've done it. You know, that little dopamine hit to just kind of get through it all. Yeah, it's like doing one thing at a time really helps on a big project to yeah. break it down. Yeah, one step at a time up the mountain, they say, or one one tree at a time, one little seed. <laughs> one tree, yeah, like planting one seed. <laughs> one thing yeah. I did want to talk about with Petrov is, you know, I really love when you, you talked about the idea of his thumbprint on screen. I just love the idea that because it's destructive, you're literally the next frame you're moving you're he's pushing the paint around again and yeah and sometimes you really see that paint pushed around beautifully um, that's actually something i really wanted to talk about yeah. because he's actually because i've looked through his frames just frame by frame yeah uh there's a lot of frame blending on them i'm not sure if that's because of the way people have uploaded them to mm -hmm. the internet yeah yeah um but but i think it's something that they they did because there are quite big jumps between and it just helps to smooth things along yes, but yeah. even even with the frame blending you can see that there's paint that exists from one frame to another it's yeah. the same paint yeah so that means that he he actually moves the same paint around from one frame to another yeah just pushes it around yeah that's extraordinary and and that's why you know when you see uh him smudge things he'll so sometimes the pose will just be moved it won't be redrawn yes. you know in in yeah. frame by frame animation we redraw it we have a fresh seat, sheet of paper put down on the light box um yeah yeah and um we redraw it all again that's nice it has a nice quality to it but this is slightly different because mm, mm. it's the same paint that's being nudged around yeah uh which partially kind of explains the flow state that he's able to yes. enter yeah because it's not starting again from scratch and considering yeah where are the proportions or, or you know where's the structure this time it's just like moving it yeah but it's also um those lovely motion blurs that yes I love. you know on every frame on every frame it's it's like memory it's, it's giving a little hint of where it's been you know i remember when i f when i was watching the cow which i think was one of his first mm. short films love it you can really see the little movements that the cow is making as it's been kind of walked down the, the train track. Mm. You can literally see the kind of push from frame to frame, you know, of the legs being moved. But within that as well, I'm, I don't know. I just don't know how he maps this out. I, I can't speak to anything but like <laughs> just to be able to capture the energy of a cow and its specific movement yeah. while just pushing paint around. Yeah, I'd, it just it speaks beyond like my brain capacity to understand the planning of that, you know, and and it's not like these films are just like visually amazing paintings that have a little yeah. bit of crank, crank movement that's a bit stiff. That, that's what you would imagine yeah. like a moving painting like these things are so yes. fluid. Mm. They are they are so they are moving so fluidly and so freely. They can move in any, any direction. direction yeah. They have they have all the principles mm. of animation squash stretch easing arcs they've got it all in there and it's a painting and it's updated <laughs> light yeah. rendering so like the, the lighting updates when when he moves his head around like yes he's painting these things mm. do you know how hard it is to to render lighting on something accurately yeah. let alone moving yeah. it let alone you know everything else that goes in he's multitasking so much there well it seems like multitasking i don't know how he does it i, I don't know either and, and it's good like when we talk about lighting is a huge part of his work as well because a lot of them open in the dark you know with a lantern or something that's just there yeah 
swaying so oh, it's, you know that, that lantern i oh love that God. opening and it's wow. just like yeah. the conversation between you know the dark spaces and where the light is i know in old man in the sea when santiago is setting out to the ocean and he's a lantern and you see the kind of light blue of the the sky behind or the dark blue of the sky behind him when the sun's starting to come mm. up like you just see the silhouette of his hat and then it's black and then the light cast on his body as to where the lantern is shining on parts of him and he's moving around and you're just like yeah I, I, like connecting the, oh anyway <laughs> you know blah, blah, blah. i think some of it is just can be put down to this guy yes. has done his research mm. like he he has gone out and yeah. shot reference footage he has done his due diligence which a lot of animators don't uh that you know and and part of that is like deadlines. Mm-hmm. People have mm-hmm. a deadline and they're just like, right, I gotta just jump straight into it. I'm the same. But I think he does his research. He'll collect loads of photographs and stuff. Yeah, and, I hope so. And yeah. he'll he'll study it because right? that's one of that's how you, I guess, achieve that mm. kind of level of rendering. But of also, he's a fantastic draftsman. Yes, like just yeah. his, his drawings mm-hmm. alone. When you see them, uh, you know, because we saw behind the scenes of um, yes, yeah, 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 of the old man of the sea. And just those sketches, oh, the quality mm. of those sketches. It's like Rembrandt or or John Singer <laughs> Sargent, you know. It's like that level of like, ooh, that's a nice sketch. Yeah, I, I'm completely fanboying now. I'm just in f- fully. And take it away from the pencil and put it <laughs> on your thumb and finger and move the paint around. Yeah. You know, there's one, is it, um, I think it's in Dream... The Dream of a Ridiculous Man, mm. when he uh, first enters the kind of dream and he's walking around on the sand and he kind of slips and you see the sand move into the hole where he yeah. is and how it moves. But it literally yeah. just looks like a thumb smear pushing it down. But it also, I remember the first time I watched it, it tricked me into thinking there was particles of sand moving, just the way <laughs> it was achieved. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's that's a real, like you said, do you Due diligence. Oh God, why can't I say it? Due diligence. Due dil- due due diligence. I, can, I can't yeah. say it now. Due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> due diligence in how someone has, like I said, um, gone out in the world and just seen things and studied it and and looked at things. It's part of the magic of animation. It's mm. like, is it a thumbprint yes. or is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, is it a stack of sand or is it both? Yes. It's both at the same time. It's mm-hmm. at the same exact time you can see the thumbprint, but you your your mind can also just you your mind can also see mm. what it is, the impression of what yes. it is. Yeah. And it's like you can you can see both of them at the same time and that's part of the magic of it. The thing mm-hmm. that you just that just astounds me again and mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's satisfying no matter who you are. You don't need to have a Bachelor of Arts degree to understand yes. why that is amazing. Anyone can look at that and just say, "Yeah, oh my gosh, it's a moving painting." Yeah. Uh, or you know, I think I showed this to my dad. I showed um, oh, wow. uh, I showed the old man in the sea to my dad, who's also an artist. He he's a stained glass craftsman. Oh wow! He makes, yeah, yeah, he makes stained glass panels, and um, he said um, it's like a, it's like a painting, but it's moving. And I said, no, Dad, <laughs> it is a moving painting. Yes, yeah. And the paint is moving. He's moved it. And yeah, it's it's incredible. Yeah. So anyone can. Anyone can. Yes. And I think the yeah. more you watch it, the more appreciation you get for it as well. It gives you more on repeated viewing. Yeah. And maybe on the first time you see it, you'll think one thing. You'll think, wow, that's so pretty. And then on the second time viewing mm-hmm. it, you'll think, wow, I really related to that young boy. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you'll think something else every time. And, you know, you can come back to it again and again and, and enjoy it. And um, and also it's got, it's universally appealing, I think. I think yeah. you can show it to any, any age range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can show it to any... Well, I haven't experimented with this, but you can probably show it to any ethnicity and they'll, mm. they'll probably find something amazing about it. And so it's got universal appeal. It's got, there's, it, there's another word, along with being timeless, mm-hmm. there's this word I used, which I learned from a teacher, which is universal truth. Yes. And, it, yeah. and that's yeah. partly, we partly see that in the human condition. Yes. We see yeah. that, you know, there's just like, maybe it's like the way someone reacts to something. That's just genuine. Mm, it's like really honest, genuine. Yeah. And when you see it, it's like, 
Oh, yeah, that's that's the truth right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that comes because I know he said as well that, like, I mean, he is really attempting to understand another soul through his work. Mm. And there can only be honesty through that that lens that you look through when you're so open to looking at someone else and trying to understand their point of view. The things that mm. kind of pass through, at least in my experience, are the, those honest moments where you're like, oh, I've done that or I can see how they've gotten there because I've nearly gotten there in a similar way before. Yeah. And about connecting those, those, like you said, universal truths through that character yeah. and that space that they're showing on screen. Yeah, I think he's interested in in that. He's also, I mean, for, I think The Dream of a Ridiculous Man was written by uh, Dostoevsky. Yes. Yeah. So very, very famous in literature. Mm. And also, you know, The Old Man and the Sea was by... Ernest yes, Hemingway. Yeah. So these are these are like really acclaimed mm. uh, writers yeah. who who are looking at the human condition that and and also looking at uh, philosophical kind yes. of debates yeah. and uh, thinking about uh, the meaning of things. So I think he's very sentimental yes, in that way as yes, well. Yes, yeah. I think he said he's very sentimental actually. He, he's a sentimental. Yeah, yeah. He, he kind of said it as like a confession, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, well, I guess I'm sentimental <laughs> after all. I was like, dude, you're definitely yes, sentimental. 100%. Like, your films are so sentimental. Yeah. Especially about life. There's yeah. so much about emotion. Mm. I mean, it's easy to look at some of the the earlier works, like The Cow or something, and, and think it's kind of like there's a darkness in there. But really, there's a kind of a beautiful mm. sentiment that, that rests within within something like that. You know, like the nurturing life of, of this cow, yeah. gives this child and the family and everything around it. And it's more a study of the, this idea that it, life, even if it's short, is better than an eternity in paradise, which I think is part of the reasoning behind... Um, the dream of a ridiculous man. I think it's Dostoevsky's. Uh, mm. I don't know the word, but it's it's his message behind the work is like life progresses forward all the time, anyways. And there's there's yeah. beauty that comes with that if you just stop and and look and take it in. You know, it's not all bad out there. Yeah, I mean, with the with the cow and with um that film, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called My Love. Yes, um, yeah. At, and and both of them kind of look at that the character is at a certain point of time in their life yeah, yeah. and it to me it so sounded like oh, this is great because we we're thinking different things here cool. you were yeah. looking at the cow with like the sort of um it, life being finite and that that's there's beauty in mm. that there's kind of mm -hmm. uh closure in mm. that and and definitely the, the way i'm looking at it is like it's a time in the boy's life yes. there's uh so it, with the cow, it's a, it's a very young boy who's yes. kind of learning yeah. things about the world and perhaps learning about death for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. sorry about the spoiler, but the, the cow dies. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, you know, it's a very simple story about this boy who, who grows up in a kind of uh, uh, a quite a poor farmer's house with his yes. mum and dad and yeah. finds a cow and they raise the cow, but then the cow unfortunately dies. And he has this kind of yeah. premonition about the cow dying. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then with my love, it's about this teenager. He's 16 mm -hmm. years old mm -hmm. and um, he's uh, kind of torn between this, uh, uh, this other girl who's 16 years old and this older woman who's like, she she says in the in the film like oh i'm so much older i've experienced so much about the world and i'm 25 years old and just, that made me burst out laughing because i'm 26 years old and i just think like not that old in the um, world you've got a lot of experience in those shoulders you know that's good thinking but anyways go on sorry yeah um but like they could almost be the character from both of them could almost be the same person uh, mm. at different points in their life yeah. could almost be they're not because uh you know i think the the boys from quite a privileged uh upbringing and mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and things but it, it's exploring you know i think especially with the the one that my love is is definitely experiencing that kind of um when you're at that age 16 years old yeah. as, a, as a boy you're finding out these uh, ideas about about love and, and about yes. women you're, you're yeah. learning about women for the first mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and he's very sort of he's very candid in that and and he's very yeah. sort of um well 
he, he's showing the inner thoughts of this boy and, and yeah. the fantasies of this this woman who's seen from you know 20 meters away and and immediately <laughs> totally rushes infatuated. into these fantasies yeah. yeah immediately gets these fantasies about running away with her and onto these mm-hmm. boats in these islands exploring and and everything and it's just like pretty accurate yeah it's pretty <laughs> yeah. accurate to how a, to how a 16 year old boy uh thinks yeah. how they think mm-hmm. and and how they feel about certain things and he's not the funny thing is like i was i was kind of laughing at it yes but he wasn't mm. and and he mm. wasn't judging the character he was the character yes yeah 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 and that's actually something you kind of taught in acting class not that i I'm an actor. I'm I'm a terrible actor. Uh, if if you got me to act, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to do it. But you know, I, I'm interested in act, in acting nonetheless. And mm-hmm. um, so I read books and stuff. And one of the things they teach you is to not judge the character. Yes, you don't know, judge. Um, yeah, you can't laugh at your character and simultaneously authentically play the character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't do both at the same time. Uh, same for like a villain. If, you, if, yes. if the villain yeah. will believe in their own logic that what they're doing is is the right thing, yeah. they will believe that what they're doing is is justified in some way, even if that justification is I felt like doing it. Yeah, yeah. That's a strong enough justification for that character to do that thing, mm-hmm. and and so yeah, like it never felt like he was laughing at the character. It felt mm-hmm. like he was mm-hmm. saying, I I feel you there, man. Mm, you know, mm. I I I love this woman too, this complete stranger. Yeah. yeah. I love I love her too because you do. Yes. And this is where we'll go with it. Mm-hmm. That you know, I, I'm I'm completely swept away in that daydream just like you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hard to do, and yeah. until you try it for yourself, it uh, you might not understand how. I say you like theoretically <laughs> yeah, I'll do whoever it. the audience yeah. is. Um, <laughs> Like if you try if you try it for yourself, you'll you'll find how hard it is uh, to kind of to not judge, to withhold your judgment, yeah. and to just and to uh, open your heart as well, like to understand yeah. someone like that. Very hard to. It's an amazing yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. It's hard to keep your heart open like that, especially in a world that constantly, you know, applauds cynicism. Um, but uh, one question I wanted to ask you was: It's interesting that when you when it just popped into my head when you talk about the um, the the kind of difference in the age of of the two you know f- kids from the cow up until the teenager mm. in in my love. But one one thing that I see as a thread throughout his work is definitely like this dualism of youth and age. Mm. Like in the dreams of of a ridiculous man, you know, the whole there's a whole dichotomy between him and his child in Mermaid. There's the old man and the younger man, the same with the old man in the mm. sea. What do you think about that? Like, do you have any thoughts on... Yeah, I think there's definitely, like, <laughs> I'm speaking as a creator here, someone yes. like, who, who's thinking about, you know, how would I how would I go about making this and, you know, doing that? <laughs> I think that um, it's a very strong tool to have as juxtaposition. That that's I think yes. that's the word you would probably use. Yeah. Juxtaposition is like, oh, we've got an old character... Now let's play that character off of someone who's very mm-hmm, young. Mm-hmm. And and it's because you're looking for conflict when you're making a film. You're looking for like, if you have mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. an old character and then a slightly old character, mm. uh, it, it's less clear the, the, the differences mm-hmm. between those two. Um, and, and really you want to you wanna show it in its, in its most visceral form, the differences. If it's an age thing, you want to show the differences yeah. in age. Or if it's, you know... Um, if it's between uh, uh, masculine and feminine, you want to show someone who's really masculine, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. hyper masculine, and very feminine, mm. and um, it just as a general principle, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, I don't know. I don't know the reasoning that he had, but I I know <laughs> that for me, it's like it's it's good storytelling. Yes, yeah. It, it does. You know, there's nuance as well, but I I think that's not where the nuance is found. And and I think it's been it, it it also speaks to being able to like I mean if he says that he's trying to find you know something that he understands in each each character he's able to you know understand someone else's soul. I I think from mm. my perspective of it, if you put in someone older and then mar- marry it with someone who's younger, it it allows 
not just a conflict, but like you said, the juxtaposition of different mind frames at a certain point in mm. time. Like in The Mermaid, where the young man starts to fall in love with this mermaid, and then the older man is having a flashbacks of what it's like to be in love with this and tries to interrupt. Yeah. Well, he sees the danger in what's yeah, happening. Yeah, you get these two opposing... You, yes. you get these two different reactions to whatever the circumstance yes. is. yeah. I, I mean, this is just a hypothetical, but mm-hmm. you could say, like, you know, if there's, a, like, a young character and they see someone die, they can be like, someone's died, this is, this is, uh, you know, like, I'm distraught, I'm, yep. this this has messed me up, and mm-hmm. the old guy could say something completely different, the old guy could say, like, I see death every day, this yes. is yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. new for me, or something like that, you know, and then, and then from that you get some meaning, you get, like, you get some kind of lesson there, yeah, and, and yeah. that's very much what I tried to do with, um, uh, with Encounter, mm. uh, one of my mm-hmm. short films. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring this back to me. <laughs> I, I kind of realized, you know, I can't have too many characters in this film because it's just going to take too long to draw them all. So I'm just going to have two characters and I'm going to make them very different to each other. Yeah. And that's going to be juxtaposition. So you have one that's kind of representing a certain type of culture and then you have another that's that's all the opposites, yeah. more or less. And then, and then I kind of crash them together um <laughs> you just uh, sort of co- you cause them to collide yes and see what happens and it's, it's amazing what happens from there yeah everyone wants to see what happens yes. when you do that interesting that, well that answers my question <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that, that's just my take on it though I, yeah. I i don't know i think there's um there's quite possibly some symbolism that i haven't seen mm-hmm. in petrov's work um i i think with the maybe the ones where he's telling the literature, like uh, Dream of a Ridiculous Man and um, The Old Man in the Sea, mm-hmm. I think he's, I think he loves those sources and yes. he yeah. wants to, he just, he mainly wants to uh, create an experience around them. Mm-hmm. He wants to mm-hmm. turn them into visuals and the, yeah. the best visuals that can get across the ideas from the authors. I, th- I believe that's what he was doing there yeah. and, and I don't know with the others how much of a say he had in the story or you know whether it's purely just written from his mind mm-hmm. or if he's basing it on something if it's based on his own experiences I'm not mm-hmm. really sure it is yeah it's hard to know because we don't know that much about <laughs> you know he's very yeah very reserved and very quiet I know he does have a website but there's not much on it you know uh, <laughs> does he yeah he does, <laughs> he does. okay I'm gonna look that yeah, up he has a show reel and his son is a show reel as well because they often work together are they they're not fan edits they're actually uploaded by yeah him. It's, it's on their website yeah oh um, wow okay I've got to I've got to find I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link I'll try and refine oh, it great. and send you a link and hopefully it's not a fan Thank website you. and I've been duped <laughs> it's funny actually on his website he's got a picture of him and Frederick back they're together oh, which yeah. makes absolute sense dream team <laughs> <laughs> it makes so much sense i mean they both worked in canada at very similar mm. times so it makes sense that they would have met yeah i need to do some more digging i mean i i i was mainly on the research for this i was mainly just watching the yes. films yeah. you know yeah. but uh, and, and i was thinking if he asks me about the date and which any of these films <laughs> are made, i am not going to be able to answer don't, I don't worry I, I have the dates i wouldn't put you in the spot <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, that's your job. <laughs> My job is to ramble. <laughs> um, but yes, I think I think um, I think we could probably leave it there, Howard. That was a really interesting yeah, discussion. Yeah. Um, yes, so. Even though we could talk about oh, it forever. for more, but I mean, I I think my voice will give out at some point. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, mine too. I'm going to have to have a drink of water now. Um, but listen, Howard, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again. Um, and thank you so much for coming on this. There, the phenom- there were such fascinating and interesting uh, points of view. I'm going to be thinking about this for a long time now. <laughs> Oh, great. I think I will too. I, I'm so glad I got to express this mm. to someone who would listen. You know, I, I don't think I could say this stuff to my to any of my family members. I think they'd tune out after five minutes. Oh, but well, it's, listen, it's as been you, great. you know yourself, you're not a prophet in your own land, unfortunately. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, listen, thank you so much, Howard. And, and um, thank you so I'm much. I'm just going to stop recording now. Thank you. This has been so long.